Hi, my name is Claiborne Collins. I'm the director of the Manual Community Services. And I just want to thank everyone for their uh, support over the years of our, of our program. We've been here for some 28 years now. And we've had a number of programs that made, made so much impact in our community. So I just want to talk real quick about some of those programs that we currently have running right now. We have the Going Home Program, which is a program that's led by Robert Richardson in the prison where he's going in and uh, rendering life skills and providing services to those, those men that are going to be released soon from prison. We have the Access to Recovery Program, which is a program that's designed to give uh, those individuals that are on drugs and alcohol a spiritual relief and provide spiritual mentoring and pastoral care to those folks who are seeking the Lord in a way that's going to help them in their sobriety and, and get uh, clean and sober. We also have a program called the uh, uh, MRT program. The MRT program is the program that we currently have right now through Multnomah County that provides um, young people and adults with an option uh, to understand why they are in jail, what they did why, you know, when they were uh, to go to jail, and also help them understand that the reason that they're in jail is because of something that they did and take blame off of other folks and accept responsibility for their own actions. Yeah, my name is Philip Johnson II. Um, and I'm here uh, to speak about the ECS today and also the MRT program, which stands for Moral Recognition Therapy. I mainly just wanted to say thank you uh, for ECS and also for MRT for giving me a chance to participate in the program uh, and also graduate. Um, unfortunately, I took it uh, while I was incarcerated at Columbia River, but the fortunate part of it is that I, had to, I was able to apply uh, so much that I learned uh, from, to my life today. And I don't know what I would do, like as far as me making the type of decisions I used to make, that just, I know for a fact that would not work today, uh, in today's society, in the way that the world is. And MRT really helped me to understand some of the things that I was doing uh, when no one was around and when no one was looking and how that was playing out in my everyday life. So I just want to say thank you uh, to the program. The purpose of ECS and the main structure behind it was to help pull men and women out of a shark infested sea. Those of you who are watching this, who may not have a knowledge of North Portland, would and you would recognize if you were here for an elongated period of time that this can be a very tough area of the city. It is the birth of drugs and crime and gangs and rapes and pillage and murder for the city of Portland and we are in the center of that area. I'm Rob Richardson and certainly I just feel led to kind of engage us a little bit about what has happened through the processes of Emanuel Community Services, that are known now at this point in time as ECS. We have certainly from initially, we started this program in a crisis when the, when the city was under siege of gang violence and certainly there was not a lot of answers and not a lot of places that people could turn to. But one thing that the, I founder and CEO at that present time, President uh, Bishop A.A. A. Wells, made it real clear that we would do more than just sit idly and funeralize young men. We would engage ourselves in getting into their lives to make a difference. And sometimes you have to stop and give your own personal testimony. I came from the streets, drug addiction, and, 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 and not gangs, but at the same time criminal activities and, and just really had given a pathway of destruction and not really caring a great deal about myself or life. And my journey from Phoenix, Arizona to come to Portland started to lift some lights. And my first encounter with the Manuel Temple Church at 1033 North Sumner and, and, and engaging myself to meet Bishop A.A. A. Wells back in the late, mid, late 80s, uh, in 85, exactly, uh, and I came to become a member of, of the church, and shortly thereafter, in that time frame, in 84, we were, we were beckoning and putting together what then was just something of a brotherhood, where they, we put things together, and we would do biking up sugar, and just little things that to tried to bring some unified people together, and certainly people that were making that cross from the streets. 
But we never know that that would launch to contracts with OYA or in Youth Authority where young men that were getting out of an institution could start to come back in their transition services. It was one of our first earlier contracts. Rob Richardson, when it comes to talking about him, it's one of the easiest things to do. He's a guy who you see both in the boardroom, you see him at city council, the county council, you see him in church, you see him walking in the streets with us, you see him walking in the park, you see him in the prison. All of that speaks to the kind of man that he is. The role that he plays in people's lives is I had the opportunity not just to walk with him for the last 18 months, but to listen to former gang members talk to me and talk to a group of people about what he means to their lives, how he has been like a lifeline to them, describes what Rob Richardson means to just almost anybody he meets. He's a great man, a man full of integrity, and one you very can, you certainly can depend on. I'm John Kanda, I'm the founder and co-chair of uh, this connected group. And we started uh, in April, on April 27th of uh, 2000, 2011, after the 14-year-old Shiloh Hampton was gunned down just uh, to our north, shot in the middle of the afternoon 14 times. And uh, you from here from Portland? No, I'm from California, from San Diego. So this really helped to assist yes. you. All right, thank you for coming. You have a good day. All right. Yes. I'm here at our Monday Food Bank, and as you can see, the people are getting what they need to sustain them while their finances are low, and some of them have said they don't even get food stamps. So this is a vital um, it's vital that the community have services like this here. And Emmanuel Community Services is all about helping the community and in putting, empowering our youth. My name is Gerard Whitecap, and I'm here to tell, talk to you guys about the going home class that I was in with Elder Rob Richardson. Uh, what it did for me is, is something that I, I can't explain in this short amount of time, but some of the things that really stick out was it provided a place for a dress rehearsal for me coming to the real world back into society. A lot of things that was going to be issues that I had no idea of knowing of that was going to be issues were addressed before I got out. So when I got, you know, my chance at freedom again, you know, I was ready for the setbacks and the obstacles and the hurdles. It was a place where we was able to come together in a group all kind of different gangs, bloods, cribs, Hispanics, no problems. Everybody talk about life and what was expected of us when we got out. Emmanuel Temple, since I've been coming here, it's been a life safe. It's been my beacon, it's kept me out of a lot of riffraff, a lot of stuff that ordinarily I'd be involved in. And so, um, if I had to sum it up, I'd say it was, it was essential for me to not going back to penitentiary. Hi. My name is Arlene Marshall. I serve as a board member for Emmanuel Community Services. I'm proud to be a part of an organization that cares about others. 
Planting a seed with Emmanuel Community Services is planting a seed with our youth. It has been our privilege since 1984 to uh, establish daycares, uh, to establish uh, men's units, women's units, to establish uh, uh, helping our daughters uh, out of complications, uh, to establish uh, a priesthood where we would be able to counsel young men who were either going into prison, coming out of prison, helping young men to get jobs, helping young men to see themselves as they really are, helping young people to establish um, adequate skills on how to get a job, how to talk to people. Some of the kids that we've talked to over the past, uh, it just seemed like they just fell out of their mother's womb, began to crawl, began to talk, and then took up guns and shot each other. They simply did not have any social skill whatsoever. So one of the main factors behind ECS was to helping young people to become tax-paying citizens so they would be able to be the people that they really admire and therefore want to be. Right now we're trying to put together a community patrol. My goal is for us to recruit men that will agree to work one day a week, well, that will agree to walk one day a week for three hours. We want to take back our community, stop the violence in our community, take it back one block at a time. We want to start with Peninsula Park. So we are trying to just um, be a positive force in our community that's going to uh, be the ears and eyes of what's happening. So I just want to encourage everyone to come out and support us and, um, and partner with us in, in this way. And also we're, we're asking every, everyone that can to partner with us with a $10 a month donation.